Hi everyone! So today I'm the mood to go thrifting. Thought I'd take you guys with me as I do this. But before we get into that, in case you're new here, welcome. My name's Mary and here on YouTube I like to share many of the projects I have going on around here with you all. So join me for some thrifting fun. As you can see, we have a beautiful day today. I even think the birds are starting to sound differently, like it sounds more spring-like out here. So my plan is to hit one thrift store. It's gonna be the Share and Care one in Berlin. And I wanna find three items that I can take home to redo. I am kind of looking for a magazine rack. I have an idea for one, but I don't want the heart shape on the side. This little wooden box, possibly a jewelry box, I think I'm gonna take home with me. So here's a sad looking one. It almost looks like someone started a project and didn't finish. Um, it's only 250. It needs some attention, so definitely going home with me. I might not be able to resist this $2 chair. I mean, yes, it's missing a seat, but I can always add one, and I love how sturdy it is. I'm almost tempted to get this bassinet. I really have no need for it since I have one almost exactly like it at home in my storage. Um, I've used it already to put plants in. It actually looks really pretty if you remove the hood and use it for a basket, you know, on a stand. And I paid a pretty penny for mine in the antique mall. This one's only $6, can't believe it. So I'm on the way home now, ended up going through the car wash. You guys probably saw my dirty vehicle. I told John when I came home that I actually ended up spending more at the car wash than at the thrift store, which is pretty far out, but I only spent around $11 for all of my items in share and care, so impressed. My first project is the magazine rack. I'm gonna start out by giving it a coat of paint. Um, I have my go-to paint that I always use, Do It Best brand. It's a satin sheen and the color is bright white. I can see as I'm applying this first coat that it'll need a couple more coats, maybe even up to four. Sometimes raw wood like this and with some of the black paint here to cover everything nicely, it just needs a bunch of paint. I decided I wanted stripes on the ends of this rack. 
and here I'm just using masking tape to create my stripes. I'm going to use a light gray paint to paint them. I'm going to create a pretty shape to add to the side of this piece and here I'm using casting resin. I've done this before here in my videos but it's one of my favorite products right now but basically you just mix these two ingredients together, pour them into one of these redesign molds and in a couple minutes you have your little embellishment and in this case I'm using a, a hair or a rabbit image along with some leaf sprigs and I do get all of these molds from Patterson Art Studio. I'll try to have their link down below in the description box, but they have all kinds of products along this line. Make sure to check them out if you're looking for something like this. So the final thing I'm going to add to this piece are pulls on the ends and I did get the, these off of Amazon. I think they're so pretty. I've used them over the past year on various projects and I think this would be fitting and kind of complete the look of what I want for this piece. Moving on to this wooden box, I want to remove all of the hardware on it and remove this horse picture. And I'm a little concerned with what's underneath. There's a thick layer of sticky glue, so I'm not sure if that is removable or not. If not, I can always just pop that top part off or that top little board and maybe just put a new one on. Uh, we'll see.
I had just enough acetone to remove all of the sticky residue so I don't have to replace the top. I don't like working with strong chemicals like this, but gotta say it did the job. I wanna add a few embellishments to this box and I went on Canva and designed a little leg of sorts. It's not actually gonna hold anything but just be there for looks. But I plan to add these onto the front corners of the box um, just to give it a nice kind of vintage look. And I'm gonna use my new laser engraver. I've had so much fun with this. Um, it is the S1 and I have the 20 watt engraver head which you can get a larger one if someone would prefer, but honestly, I'm really liking this 20 watt for the work that we do with it. And I had done a whole video on this in case you missed it and wanna know more about it, make sure to check that out. But gotta say, I'm kinda obsessed with X-Tool. Like they have some amazing engravers. We also have the P2 out in the shop. You've probably seen that one. And I do have affiliate links down below in the description box if you're thinking of investing in one. Uh, make sure to check those out. And I do get a small commission if someone buys through my link but it doesn't change the price for you guys, but you won't be disappointed if you're thinking of investing in one, maybe even starting a small business or just for hobbies, um, just so much fun. Um, it's amazing what they can do. Here I'm just using my Do It Best brand paint for the first coat at least um, on these little carvings. Uh, it's easier sometimes with those dark edges that a laser engraver leaves to just give it a coat of paint You know, using a brush. I feel like I can get more on than spray paint. I plan to paint the inside of this box white and the outside a light pink. I recently picked up a spray paint. It, it's Rustoleum brand. It's their chalk line and it's a light pink color. I thought it's so pretty and fitting for a jewelry box. And my little embellishments, like the little wooden ones and the hinges, I think I'll paint those white and I'll probably add a decor transfer on the top. We are having a rainy day today. I think it's supposed to rain all day and I kind of like days like this, but it is a little bit harder to spray paint, of course, and to dry paint, but I think if I work underneath the porch roof here, it should be good.
So this oval frame is a really simple project, basically just painting it and distressing the edges. I'm always on the lookout for frames like this. Um, it's something that's a little harder to find. And sometimes when I layer things, maybe on the mantel shelf or just elsewhere, I just need different shapes and textures. And I really like the look of this. For this chair, I of course plan to paint it. I'm gonna clean it up a bit first and then mix some paint together to create the color that I'm looking for. Don't really have it on hand, but I wanted sort of a mint green color. And here I'm just mixing white and green together. After applying that first coat, I thought it seemed just a bit too bright for me, almost neon. So I went ahead and mixed some gray in with it. And that was exactly the shade that I was thinking. I think it turned out really nice. And of course I can't give you a color name for this since I just mixed some random you know, paint together here again. But I do know there is a color that I used to use in the past, didn't have it on hand, but it's called Rainwashed and it is almost exactly this color. It's such a pretty, almost blue-green, gray color. I of course want to add a seat to this chair. Here I'm measuring and then I'm going to cut some eighth inch Luon to fit you know, on top of the, the chair. Ended up playing around with it. What you see here to begin with isn't quite how it's going to end up then, but kind of the same look. I'll try to put a video clip of how I actually did it then in the end. Ended up adding some braces underneath so that my uh, Luon would hold, otherwise it wouldn't be strong enough to hold a person. plan to cover the seat with this pretty fabric that I found in a thrift store a while back and in times like this I'm always so glad that I pick up these things even if I don't need them at the time they just catch my eye and then when I do projects like this they're there for the using um, it's so awesome but anyway I thought this was really pretty and I plan to add a ruffle out around the cover and then tie it in the back and I don't think I'll actually have to create a pocket, you know, for my piece of foam. I think things might stay in place, you know, with that ruffle out around. 
and foam of course is kind of sticky almost and this fabric isn't slippery either so I'm gonna see if it'll stay put without actually creating the pocket because I know my ruffle is gonna look nicer if it's not sewing around a pocket, like it's not gonna stand out as much, if that makes sense, but we'll see how it looks. There's different things that could be done with the back here. It definitely needs something. I think it would be really pretty also with one of those casting resin embellishments or a decor transfer. Either or both even together would look really good. But being that I already did that in this video, I wanted to do something different. So I opted to go with using my Silhouette Cameo and cutting out this pretty French country design. I think this will look really good on here. I hope you enjoyed following along as I worked on these fun projects and hopefully I motivated you to maybe do the same thing if you're needing some decorations, maybe spring decorations for your home and you don't want to just spend a lot of money. So much fun to go into a thrift store and find items that aren't super expensive and then you know bring them home and turn them into what you actually want for your home. Before ending here, I have a few announcements to make. I have an exciting announcement regarding our candles, but first let's take a look at these new little risers that we have. Uh, we've had these round risers for a couple years and they're one of our top sellers and we've so far just sold them in a stained finish and being that we have laser engravers we started thinking you know we could do more with them ended up uh, laser engraving these designs on them this is just a start you might see some more of this and if you have any requests ever like if you think something would look nice that something you have in mind maybe even a custom riser let me know I'm always open to new ideas but for now this is what we have and these are the perfect size to hold any of our candles I have a jar candle here I'll set this one on here just so you can see it's not still not too big for the riser I don't think uh, but I think they would make lovely gifts, even a combination of a candle and a riser together. And you could also set a small plant on these risers or any other decoration. I just like decorating with, uh, you know, to elevate things. Sometimes if I create a little grouping, I enjoy trays and risers. Uh, you guys probably know that. And the second announcement I have is we have a candle bundle. We took our most popular three items here, the pint jar, the four ounce and the wax melt and we created a bundle and you get to select the scents that you want and in the listing you won't have the typical drop down we weren't able to have three different varieties like for our three different items here 
for you guys to choose, you know, the three different scents. So we have to go through the personalization box and hopefully it's not too confusing, but if you do decide to order, you'll need to use that box. Yet, like you won't be able to check out unless you actually put something in there. And what you need to put in there, of course, are your scent choices. The last thing I wanna mention is we are gonna have free shipping starting today on all of our candles and wax melts this spring season. And we'll see how it goes and then go from there as far as you know to see if we'll continue that or not but for now free shipping head on over to the etsy shop check it out amy the lady that pours them for us does an amazing job and she now has one of her daughters helping too so they do a super job with them and they're 100 percent natural soy wax candles and i love that they're white they're going to fit into anyone's home and they use clean fragrance oils to scent them with. They all smell amazing. I can't think of one scent I wouldn't burn. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.